all the, the young folks who came in this morning uh, who took their day off. They could have been <laughs> sleeping late, could have been home having uh, frozen waffles or uh, watching The Price is Right. I don't know what you do. Pop-tarts. Uh, your Pop-tarts. They were on the phones there. Uh, but uh, thank you all so much for coming in and talking about this very important uh, civic engagement uh, project. Tell us a little bit about it, if you would, please, Molly Rice. Absolutely. This is, our, I believe, our sixth year uh, doing a civic engagement project. It started back um, when my students didn't want to really compete anymore at North Carolina Theater Conference. We were doing well, going to state and all that, but they said, really, what's the need of a certificate on our wall? Why don't we actually go into our community, see who's there, and see how we can help through art? And that was with um, a group that we focused on women in need, and it was around the Zara Baker. Um, horrible thing that happened and uh, they decided they wanted to uh, uplift the Women's Resource Center, Safe Harbor Rescue Mission, right. uh, Children's Advocacy and Protection Center, and uh, Family Guidance Center. And they wrote a play or did creative arts around gathered stories. And we decided to call it torch bearing, where we torch bear the life stories of those in need. Since then, how we have just taken off and um, we've worked with uh, Pace at Home right. with the elderly. We've worked with Grace House when it was open and gathered the life stories of homeless neighbors. And from then, we worked with uh, Catawba Valley um, Guardian Ad Litem. And last year, we worked with Catawba Valley Behavioral Health Care to try to stamp out right. mental health right. um, issues. And so uh, this year, this troop decided hospice. And I, at first, how I was kind of nervous because I thought emotionally, how would we be able to handle actually meeting those at the end? But hospice gave us this beautiful understanding that there is life there. All right. And y'all have tackled some pretty uh, weighty issues before. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think that, yes, it would be difficult, but uh, certainly something that uh, that your troop is up to, uh, if it's anything like the folks that we've talked with in the past. Let's start with talking with, if we could, with some of the young folks who are with us this morning. Let's start with Jackson Shue. Good morning. Nice to see you. Morning, Hal. How are you? I'm well. Now, uh, tell me a little bit about yourself, if you would. You're at St. Stephen's High School? I'm at St. Stephen's High School. I'm a senior. Um, I want to go on to, uh, to college to study comedy, preferably stand-up comedy. Right. So that's going to be something. So this is a little different 180 probably from Definitely. comedy. <laughs> but still uh, still you'll be doing a performance. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Tell me a little bit about what the performance will be and how it relates to what you've learned as you spent some time with Catawba Regional Hospice. Well, my group was the first group to go into hospice. We had a group of uh, three people. Right. And we got to meet an actual daughter of a hospice patient. It was really um, eye-opening the first time we sat down was because that she had told us that she had already made plans. She had just got back from the funeral home making plans for her mother. And that really set us set us ready to go about talking about the, um, her life. And we got to know all about her life. And she had such a, the patient had just a beautiful life. And she had just beautiful values. She was very religious. Right. And she just wanted to help and love everybody. And the, the main thing that uh, when, we got to meet, when we got to go into the patient's room was that she was like the most not materialistic person you right. ever meet in your entire life. The only thing she wanted in, in her room was her wedding ring and all the cards that people, had, that loved ones had sent her. Wow. And her son had made her a tree, a, a, a magnet tree. Right. And it would stick all the cards to the tree, and we got we got pictures of it, and it's one of the most beautiful things. And it really helped me learn that I've had female members pass in hospice, and it's really just a great place. And it's not really about death; it's more about curing. When we come back to you, I want to talk with everybody a little bit about what how this impacts what your performance will be or how you will bring this uh, to the community. Molly Rice, when will the perform? Will you have a performance or several performances? Tell me. Hey, how it's Today? Tonight. tonight. It is tonight okay. at First Presbyterian okay. Church in Hickory. And that's downtown? That is. Okay, very In good. the Fellowship Hall, and tickets are $10, and all proceeds go back to hospice. Go back to hospice? Absolutely. Very good. Let's talk next with Carson uh, Gant. Good morning, Carson. Good morning. 
exciting. Now, you'll be doing a performance based on what you learned and what you found out about with hospice? I will be, What yeah. will your performance be? Um, I'll be doing a spoken word poem, mainly because um, the patient that I was able to meet, she was only 23 years old. Oh, wow. Um, and she was a home patient, so she was receiving care in her home that was only a short distance away from the hospice center. Um, but she told me that she used to write poetry, and so I thought that would be a great thing for her to have was another poem. Carrie, is it Carrie Smith? Is that right? Yes, sir. Lean on up here to the mic so we can hear you. Mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit about what you, uh, who you visited with or what you found out about with yeah. Catawba Regional Hospice. I actually got to meet a patient that she would go into hospice. She left, she lived at her house, but she would go in at different points to right. the hospice. And she was just such a wonderful woman. And she had told me a bunch of stories about her life. And she actually told me this story about how she, her and her boyfriend were truck driving. And she actually rescued this woman and her child from a burning car. Wow. So how does this yeah. impact you and what you will be performing? I'm actually doing a monologue from a story about her life. Because I'm doing a monologue from after she just got into a fight with... Um, she was a with, character. Yeah. Too, yeah. And because she used to be quite an activist. So right. she stood up for what she believed in. How very interesting. So you'll be doing that tonight. First yes, Presbyterian sir. Church. It starts what time, Molly Rice? 7 p.m. 7 p.m. So uh, find out a little bit about what these young folks have learned from and will bring to you from Catawba Regional Hospice. Olivia Howard, nice to see you this morning. you got a long way to lean over to that <laughs> microphone. Nice to see you. How are you this morning? Um, I'm good. I met with uh, Pruella, a hospice worker who focuses on the spirituality of hospice and how... Um, um, she prays with patients, she sings to them, and she helps them move on to the other side and helps them understand what's going on with all that they're going through. Wow. And she also helps um, with family members who are going through grief and helping them get through those hard situations. So you actually worked with a worker. Yes. And, and, and her role there. So lots of different roles, lots of different things mm -hmm. that happen with Catawba Regional Hospice. And before we go to the break, Mr. Shu, you'll be performing what, sir? I'll be performing a, a group piece with myself and two other people. I'll be doing a spoken word piece, and another member in our group will be singing. I'm just going to throw this out because we have just a couple minutes before we, or just really, really seconds before we go to the to the break. Um, and anybody can speak to this. Big impact on your life, taking a look at issues at end of life. Uh, tell me a little bit about how this maybe impacted you and whomever would like to speak to that. I think um, Carson Gamp. Just getting to meet someone that was only six years older than myself, I think it was really important to know that no matter what point you're at in your life, you should live it to its fullest. And that's really what my patient was all about. Had you ever thought when you went into, what year are you in school? A senior. Senior. Did you ever thought when you go into, when you were going into senior year, you'd be facing or taking a look at some of these issues? No, not at all. <laughs> and, and, and so it's been impactful. It's been a little mm -hmm. different. Tell me, uh, Carrie Smith, had you heard of hospice before? Did you know a little bit about it or anything about I, it? I knew a little bit about it, but learning through this, it's changed my perspective on what it actually is. It's taught me that that death should be accepted just like birth because... It's a beautiful part of life. Olivia Howard, uh, people that you go to school with, do they have any idea what goes on at hospice? Do um, they have any idea of what, what happens? Uh, you feel a little bit special or different because you got to do this? Well, many people have a stigmatization of hospice and think it's only about death. Like, that's the end. That's what my parents would say. It's right. only death. But what I learned is hospice is really a source of love, not just death. When we come back, I believe that we're going to hear uh, selected performances that we may hear or we will here tonight uh, at uh, First Presbyterian Church, 7 o'clock. It's the Tractor Shed Theater. Molly Rice, the director at St. Stephen's High. We've got the students from St. Stephen's in this morning. We come back. We'll hear a little bit about what we may hear this evening. More First Talk on the way. This is WHKY Hickory, 1290 AM, and now on 102.3 FM. Your news starts right now. 
I'm Rob Eastwood, WHKY News. A Wilmington man was sentenced to a minimum of eight years in prison after pleading guilty to obtaining property by false pretense and possession of stolen goods and admitting his status as an habitual felon during Catawba County Superior Court earlier this month. 54-year-old William McDowell Butler Jr. was given an active prison sentence of eight to ten years. Butler received money after knowingly defrauding the gold and silver assay company and the Gold King in March 2015 and was found to be in possession of stolen property belonging to three other individuals. The defendant's habitual felon status enhanced the sentence he was given. 31-year-old John Christopher Watts of Old NC-10 in Hickory was arrested last Thursday by Burke County Sheriff's officers. He's charged with felony counts of trafficking drugs by possession, possession with intent to manufacture, sell, and deliver Schedule 6 controlled substance, and sale and delivery of controlled substance within 300 feet of a school. Last Thursday, Burke County Sheriff's officers were serving a warrant at a residence on Old NC-10, while at the home, Watts reportedly threw drugs out the rear door of the residence in the presence of officers. An investigation revealed narcotics inside the residence. The Catawba County Board of Commissioners will meet in regular session tomorrow night. Commissioners typically meet on Monday, but this month's session was moved to Tuesday due to the Martin Luther King Jr. holiday, which is today. Commissioners will hold four public hearings at tomorrow's session. One public hearing is scheduled to receive citizen comments and consider an economic development agreement with GKN Driveline Newton LLC. More details on the meeting available at whky.com. The meeting starts at 7 o'clock tomorrow night at the 1924 Courthouse. You can now listen to WHKY on 102.3 FM. I'm Rob Eastwood, WHKY News. Looks like we'll have mainly cloudy skies for this Martin Luther King Jr. holiday. A couple of showers possible, especially early on. Temperatures will stay cool with highs in the upper 40s to lower 50s. Overnight tonight into Tuesday morning, mostly cloudy and chilly. Low temperatures will dip down into the lower 40s. And then Tuesday's forecast, mostly cloudy with a slim chance for rain. And it will be milder with highs in the lower 60s. I'm meteorologist Amy Wilmoth in the Weather Center. Over the weekend, the Catawba Valley Community College women's basketball team defeated Lenore Community College 79-40. With the win, the Red Hawks are now 7-3 overall, 3-2 in conference play. They'll go on the road to take on Patrick Henry College on Thursday. The CBCC men's basketball team lost to Lenore Community College at home Saturday 74-71, and then they fell on the road yesterday to Pitt Community College 91-73. With the loss, the Red Hawks now 11-7 overall, 5 and four in conference play. They'll take on Wake Tech on the road Saturday. The Lenore Ryan women's basketball team got a 64-41 win over Mars Hill back on Saturday. Bears improved to 10-6 and six overall, 6-4 six and four in conference play. They'll be traveling to Coker on Wednesday. The LR men's basketball team defeated Mars Hill 84-74 on Saturday. Bears are 7-8 and eight overall, 6-4 six and four in conference play. They too will face Coker on Wednesday. Appalachian State women's basketball fell by 5 to Coastal Carolina Carolina on the road 60 to 55. Joy Jones reaching the 1,000 point plateau for her career for the Mountaineers, who fall to 7 to 9 overall, 2 and 3 in conference play. They'll be playing at Georgia State Thursday. And the App State men's basketball team fell 85 73 at Coastal Carolina Saturday. They fall to 6 and 10 overall, 1 and 4 in conference play. WHK. morning. Welcome back to First Talk with Hal Rowe on 1290 WHKY Talk Radio for the Greater Hickory Metro. 102.3 FM, Molly Rice. We're talking during the break. You feel this is what education should be. Absolutely. Uh, if young people are given the opportunity, they are amazing at compassion. 
when they decided, they decided, um, I empower my students to make those decisions to work with hospice. So we contacted Kelly Tate, and Kelly Tate came in, and uh, she told us what hospice was, and she listened about our previous civic engagement work, and she was insightful enough uh, to, to go ahead and spearhead this project with us. So I am so honored that Kelly Tate was able to see the worth in teenagers coming in to learn about hospice. Jackson Shu, let's hear a little bit of what we may hear from you or what we will hear from you tonight at First Presbyterian Church Civic Engagement Project with Catawba Regional Hospice. Mr. Shu. This is a, a, a part of a spoken word piece that I'll be doing. It's uh, in the perspective of the patient's daughter. Mother felt like decades have come and gone, but every second has its meaning. Her environment set such a low bar for what she could accomplish. And even when she couldn't take another step, the faith she always had pushed her. With a support system that was so strong, stronger than she ever could have imagined, with a husband, with a beautiful voice that can move anybody to tears, and a mother and a father, with a picture-perfect family that kept them tighter than you ever could imagine. And yes, mother, we are going home tonight. Wow, very nice. Very, very nice. Uh, up next, Carson Gant, who will be doing spoken word poetry. Yeah, I'll Tell just be doing a snippet of my piece. Uh, it's called Home, and it's for the patient that I met. Let's get it. Proverbs 31, 35. She is clothed in strength and dignity, and she laughs without fear of the future. There will be a day when you can go home. One day again, you will hike through hills, valleys, plains, to the highest mountaintops and see the beauty and the glory and grandeur of something greater than this world. You laugh without fear of the future, for you know that what lies ahead is better than lying in your bed, dreading the pain of every day. But there will be a day when you can go home, where you will be without pain, at peace. Very, very nice as well. This is going to be, I know, an impactful evening for folks. Uh, maybe try to make plans if you can. If you have time tonight, make time if you don't uh, to be at First Presbyterian Church as the Attractor Shed Theater uh, seniors and others from St. Stephen's High School will be um, performing their civic engagement project, the culmination of their civic engagement project with Catawba Regional Hospice. Who's the next performer up? It's going to be Olivia Howard, spoken word. Ms. Howard? Mm. This is um, from the prospect of Pruella. Pruella. Nineteen years ago, my heart was cupped by the hands of God and led me to this hopeful place. But when my mother could not find her breath, I knew t I knew to send her to a God-sent home. I found hospice. Eleven years ago, I found my calling in this fortunate home. I started singing, praying, and I truly felt helpful, for I found God again in these walls. Three years ago, my father again couldn't find his breath, so I knew to send him to this hopeful place where happiness was waiting for him. And all I know is that love can triumph and give strength, hope, and faith to us all. Some very nice pieces. Thank you all very much for sharing that this morning. And I know it must be difficult to come in. You're not in the setting. You're not there. But to be able to do this, uh, very nice. Before, uh, Carrie Smith, let me ask you. you did not, we did not hear a performance piece from you this morning. Yes, sir. I told you during the break. Mm -hmm. To me, it kind of would have been scary or a little bit spooky, you know, to go in. And, and because, you know, everybody has this idea of death, you know, and sometimes that's associated with hospice. Right. Tell me, and, and Molly was telling me, Ms. Rice was telling me during the, uh, during the break that nobody felt this way, that you really yeah. came out with a, a positive perception. It wasn't scary or difficult for you. Yeah, because even walking into the, the building, you know, it is very, it gives you, you instantly feel like really warm because it really feels like a home because right. they work really hard on making their patients feel comfortable. Right. And I really learned a lot about accepting death because death is as natural as birth itself. This has got to be a fantastic experience for all of you and maybe 
something a little bit that maybe not everybody receives at mm-hmm. school is an opportunity to go out and be engaged right. uh, in the community. Now, y'all are all seniors. Have you worked on the projects earlier, the other tractor shed yes, uh, projects, and you're all nodding your head? Have any of you been in before? Of, uh, to the studio, yeah. I, I was going to yeah. say. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, mm-hmm. so both of y'all have been in. Forgive me, I, I yes, did not. No, it's okay. You've grown up so much since I saw you last. <laughs> I'll use that. I'll use that excuse. How about that, uh, Molly Rice? Tell us before we wrap up, because literally we have just a couple minutes left uh, this morning about the rest of the troop, the folks we did not get to meet this morning. There are 15 in the 15. troop, uh-huh. and they are auditioned. Um, I interview them and ask them why they want to make a difference in the community. Uh, usually each spring I choose the group that right. will take on civic engagement. And um, a lot of them are not actors. Uh, some are you know, musicians. Some are just students with big hearts. And right. so we have some beginning uh, actors who haven't really had much stage time to my veterans who have been here, done that. Um, So we are honored that hospice let us come in to their beautiful, warm. When they say warm, it truly is. You feel the love, everyone, you know, as soon as you walk in the door. And so, again, Hal, thank you for your support of the Tractor Shed and having us on. Oh, you're more than welcome. Before we wrap up this morning, Jackson Shoe, real quick, we're going to go around the room here just so we only got a couple minutes left. Uh, this is your last year at St. Stephen's. What do you see down the road? Career-wise, what do you want to do? I'd like to uh, have a career just making people laugh, be a stand-up comedian, and just go around this great country of ours. So you're thinking uh, you're not going to stay in Hickory, you're going to move out of the area and do some traveling? Yes, sir. Very good. How about you, uh, Ms. Gant, Carson Gant? Um, I really want to go into stage management and theater, and I'm trying to get into the School of the Arts. Right. So we'll see how that goes. So uh, you thinking uh, come back to Hickory? You thinking move on, uh, area of the country you want to live I think move on, probably some large city like New York. <laughs> New York. There yeah. you go. Atlanta, Chicago, someplace like that. Yes, definitely. Okay, well, I'll tell you what my mom would tell me. Be careful. <laughs> be careful out there. How about you, Carrie Smith? Um, yeah, um, I want to go on to study acting and maybe minor in American Sign Language interpreting. American Sign Language. How very interesting. <laughs> well, we wish you the very best with that. And how about you, Miss Howard? Um, I want to study uh, poetry, spoken word, and English literature. Very nice. Well, I wish you all the very best with future pursuits before oh, we wrap up? I was up. just going to say I have no influence on these young people at all. No. Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> I want to thank you all very much for joining us this morning. Thank we you wish you the very you. best. And uh, uh, we're going to go ahead and close the way we normally do, Monday through Thursday, with the greatest song in the world for the greatest nation in the world. Ladies and gentlemen, our national anthem. <laughs> Thanks so much for joining us on First Talk. Tonight, the students from the Tractor Shed Theater performing their civic engagement production at First Presbyterian. It starts at uh, 7 o'clock downtown, $10 admission fee. All the proceeds go to Catawba Regional Hospice. If you have had hospice touch your life in one way or another, it may be something you'd like to consider for this evening. We'd like to thank the members of the Tractor Shed Theater who made it here on their day off from school. And Molly Rice, the theater director, more first talk in the morning. Be grateful for what you got. <laughs>